Good morning, morning. one and all. Everybody that's uh, here and online, I'm glad you're here. Even if you come in late. (laughs) If you would, uh, stand and uh, pass the peace. I pick on Nina, Nina. (laughs) This shouldn't take long. Well, I got a short circuit. We're okay. I'm I'm a firm believer. If you got something to say, say it. Don't drag it out. Oh yeah. Uh, What was the the Bob Dole three? Be on time. Nick tells me he has a short sermon, so you can take your time. (laughs) If you would, stand with me and uh, turn to page 59. We'll sing, uh, This is My Father's World. You'd like everything short this week. <clears throat> Two things on the list, and both of them will be eating. Monday, a Disciples Men's Fellowship will meet at 6.30. And Tuesday, the Lunch Bunch at Sam's Southern Eatery. That'll be 
I suspect uh, some of us are at home because of verse 3 of the hymn we just sung, God trusts us with the world to keep it clean and fair. I know a number of folks had some issues keeping some of the roads clean and fair this morning. And so I'm glad you all are here this morning. I'm glad I'm here this morning. What a, what a wild ride last night. But at any rate, uh, a few more announcements. The first is, please do keep in mind, we do have the congregational meeting uh, following worship next week. Uh, likewise, we will be having a reception for uh, Ron Watson and celebrating, um, I believe it's something like 50-something years since uh, we've had our first worship service in this building. And so we will be having a reception following worship this next week. But with all that, let's rejoice in some good news. This is our chance to share birthdays, anniversaries, and good news of all kinds. Not all at once, please. Amen. Amen. It's Father's Day. It's Father's Day. Amen. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Wonderful. I wasn't lying, it is a short sermon, so, you know, help me out. <laughs> Seeing no others, let's go ahead and stand and go to God with our call to worship. We even have a short call to worship. Our hope rests in God. Our rock and we. we will not be shaken. We trust in Let's pray. You, compassionate God, are the ground of our being and the river of life. You both steady our roots and draw them to seek living waters. God, you are like the sunlight enticing us taller and like the breeze rustling our leaves. You are with us through the hard seasons of summer heat and the nights when winter's frost ice is the landscape. God, your love warms and sustains us. You are everything to us. So this day, let our gratitude be great. This day, let our praise be plentiful. This day, let our worship be wonderful. God, we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, Well, obviously today's Father's Day. That's probably why there's such poor attendance, but you know, that was a joke. No, the first Father's Day goes back to Adam, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't celebrated for several millennia after that. But Father's Day was first celebrated actually in June 19th of 1910 in the state of Washington. And that was started by a lady named Sonora Smart Dodd. 
And Miss Dodd was from a family of nine whose mother died when they were very young. So she was raised by a widower and was obviously very fond of her father and that kind of started some momentum. Um, Europe and Latin America, Father's Day is actually celebrated on St. Joseph's Day, which is uh, the traditional Roman Catholic holiday on March 19th. So that's kind of an interesting fact. It's a little bit different from our country. But then as we got into World War II, um, Father's Day began to be celebrated uh, much more fervently as a way to honor American troops and to also gather steam for the war effort. Um, but it wasn't until 1972 that uh, Father's Day became an official U.S. holiday, and that was endorsed by President Nixon. So, um, anyway, Father's Day is is important, not near as important as Mother's Day, but still very important. So, the youth uh, the youth made these little gift bags and cards for all the fathers, and uh, we obviously thank you for all that you do. And if you uh, don't get one, please raise your hand so we have plenty. <laughs> Fathers get little enough time. I thought we'd let them have a little longer. <clears throat> Scripture reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. That'll be on page 953 in your pew Bibles if you choose to follow along. <clears throat> I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole Imperial Guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Well, as you all know, we are continuing our sermon series. We're going church shopping. We are looking at uh, several of the letters of the New Testament, several of the um, letters Paul sent out to various churches. You'll recognize that, for instance, the Galatians uh, were a people group. From, they were the Galatians. The Philippians, they were Philippians. They were from the city of Philippi. And so we are looking at a variety of churches and looking at not just the uh, theological insights that Paul sent them, but also some of the uh, back and forth pragmatics. And specifically today, I have to let you know, I'm at a bit of a crossroads. See, uh, there is a Chris Rock joke that perfectly epitomizes what was going on with the Philippians. And it's, it's caused me to have a little bit of a, of a crisis of faith. See, I, I feel compelled to share it because it epitomizes what's going on in this book, but of course, I also can't really share it because 
This is a church and it's a Chris Rock joke. <laughs> uh, let me try a cleaned up version. Y'all um, fill in the blanks as you see fit. We'll, we'll keep it up, we'll, you know, we'll be appropriate. Joke is, I'd rather have a hot dog with a friend than a steak with a bad person. You know, I, I've been reflecting a little bit uh, with me preparing to, to head off to New Mexico. That's where I went to college, and one of the things that I'm getting excited about is that I'll get to see one of my best friends, my friend Gabe, from back in college, and he was definitely a friend that I had a, a lot of hot dogs with. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very excited to see him once again. We, we got tickets this fall to go to uh, a Wilco concert, so that's gonna be good. It, it's actually gonna be the, the first sort of steak moment, if you will, that we had, because in college, it, it was hot dogs. I remember we rent a, a house that, for the most part, was illegally built, just cinder blocks stacked up together. Uh, somehow that just got by in Albuquerque. And I remember it, it getting down to like the 40s at night in the winter, uh, and us huddling around the only heat source there in the house and, you know, just trying to stay warm. And we had a blast doing that. That was the greatest thing we ever did. You know, I remember uh, that same winter, us having a, a big crock pot of bean and ground meat chili. That's pretty much all we ate for an entire winter, and we loved it. We also, we added a, a lot of jalapenos and tried to outspice each other. That wasn't part of it. That was just us, you know, being kind of dumb. I remember Gabe and I, we, neither of us had cars all throughout college, but we tried to stay mobile anyway. It was precarious situation, to say the least. And just the same, I remember we, uh, we were gym partners there for a good long while. And I think that, that really epitomizes having hot dogs with a friend is going to the gym. You know, it's, it's not fun. It's oftentimes it's painful. It's hard work. You have to get after it, but it's productive. It's meaningful. It's something good. So I'm excited about uh, having a couple of hot dogs with a friend again. Because, see, what, what made all those times meaningful, as far as I can tell, what made those times worth it, even though they, they were not fun times otherwise, was that we knew our why. Gabe and I, we knew our why. We, see, we were going to be the best worst band you've ever never heard of. Either the best worst band or the worst best band. We weren't sure which. But we did that for, for a couple of years, and it kept us going. You know, no matter what came up, we always had that to look forward to. We always had our why. We always had our purpose. We always had something that was meaningful to look forward to. And that's vital. You know, if you know your why, you can make it through just about any how. Even I, have, we knew our why, and so that's what kept us going through the cold winter nights, through ground meat and bean chili, through all of that. We knew our why. We knew our purpose. Paul and the Philippians, they, uh, they knew their why. What was happening, see, is Paul, we understand that he was in prison. He was probably imprisoned for about two years at the point when he reached out to the Philippian church. Uh, and he's writing to these people while in prison, and you can tell he's elated. He's just happy to talk to them. He's having hot dogs with friends, see? And he's re out to this church in Philippi, and we have to understand Philippi, it was, first of all, it was the first church that Paul had founded in European soil. He had founded it alongside Lydia, uh, and it was a small church. It was a struggling church. It was a church in a town that was overrun with Roman elites in a time when uh, being a Christian was something of a high crime. You weren't sharing in the Roman gods. And so Paul, he's being persecuted by the Romans, the Philippians, they are being persecuted by the Romans, and yet all throughout what we see in the letter to the Philippians is just a model church. Just can't wait to see you again. Just, things are going great over here, that kind of stuff. What it was is that they knew their why. They had a unified purpose. They had a unified reason for existing, for continuing on, and so because they knew their why, no, no how was going to get in their way. Specifically, they mention here that they're spreading the gospel together. 
That Paul, he's elated because he's been imprisoned for no other reason than he can't stop talking about Jesus, something I myself aspire for. I've gotten close, I think. They're spreading the gospel. They're unified on their why. I recall uh, in college, there were a, a couple of girls who lived a couple doors down from me in the dorms. And I remember one of them, they, they were excited. They were roommates, and they were excited because they both uh, grew up in church. They both grew up going to youth group. And so they were looking to, to do something with that together. And I remember one girl, she, um, she was just a madman with a Bible. She could, you know, any verse, any idea, any concept, she could find you exactly where that's at. And she was kind of dismayed because her roommate, who was also involved in, in youth ministry, she couldn't tell you one thing from the other. If you asked her to, to find the Psalms, she'd have to look through the table of contents, that sort of thing. I remember the other girl, uh, she was equally dismayed. What would happen is uh, they, they went to do something like build bunk beds, and, and the first girl, she's great at her Bible, but she didn't know how to make a bunk bed. And I remember the, the second girl being bewildered by that, saying, didn't you go to youth group? Didn't you ever do a mission trip? Nothing? There wasn't a third girl, but for my example, let's say there was. Uh, a third girl, she, she was always loved, always had a kind heart, always reached out to people, made a bright, sun, shiny day. Each of them, you have to understand, each of them, they, they knew their why. They shared the gospel. You can share the gospel in any number of ways. You can share it like the first girl in our example, through your head knowledge. There is intellectual content that is the Christian faith. And so you can share it that way. You can share it from the heart. You can be an incarnational kind of people, always reaching out, always loving folks, always taking care of those who are in need. You can reach out with your hands, service projects, building decks, things like that. All of those are ways of sharing the gospel. But any time that you can share the gospel together, any time that with, whether it be with your head, your heart, or your hands, any time you can share the gospel, any time you can unite as a people, be one, know your why together, it's good. It makes it to where you can endure just about anyhow. And so like I said, this is a brief sermon today. You're welcome. But that's what I want to encourage us to do. That's, I think, the, the main lesson from the Philippians. Anytime you're in a rut, anytime you can't tell what direction you're going, anything like that, find someone to share your why with. Whether it be based in the head, the heart, or the hands, find an opportunity to share your why. It gets you through all sorts of hard times, even ground meat and chili.
<clears throat> the dictionary definition of remembering, having you or be able to bring to one's mind an awareness of someone or something that one has seen, known, or experienced in the past. For instance, I remember the screech of the horn as the car come at me. <clears throat> more and more as I age, I have difficulty with remembering. And I think God understood, I know God understood, that that was going to be the situation with mankind. <clears throat> and because of that, he tells us on several occasions to remember. <clears throat> Back in Exodus when the Passover had happened and Moses was telling the people to remember this day in which he came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of the hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall be no leavened bread to be eaten. <clears throat> remember what has happened. In Luke, we read, he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I find if I don't uh, plan to remember, I don't remember. There's things that have happened in my life many years ago that were significant at the time, but for some reason nothing's ever triggered a memory to come back about them. <clears throat> God understands that those things happen, and that's why he points out to us, remember. This is an important thing. Remember me. I found it interesting as I was reading that on down. One of the criminals who was hung with Jesus was hurling insults at him, at him saying, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him saying, don't you fear God? He said, since you're under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done, done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. <clears throat> we gather here to remember our Lord and what he has done and what he has suffered that we might have life everlasting. <clears throat> when you come to the table, please come up the outside aisles, and when you return, Go back through the middle. Everyone is welcome. It's at this table where we recall Jesus on the night he was betrayed. For it was on that night when he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks for it, lifted it up. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take of it, all of you, eat of it, and do so in remembrance of me. In a similar way, he took the cup after supper. Lifting it up, he gave thanks for it. He blessed it, and he said, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, for the forgiveness of sin of many people. Take of it, all of you drink of it, and do so in remembrance of me. Let us come forward.
Please pray with me. Gracious God, our Father, we here humbly bow before you and lift up grateful heart and soul to thank you for your unspeakable gift to us, even your only begotten Son. We praise his holy name as we gather to remember him as he has requested. Yes, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. All power, glory, and honor are his forever and ever. Father, all that we have, you have provided, and we would now return a portion and pray that it might be used in the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. For we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. This time, if there are any who feel called to join First Christian Church in membership, please do come forward. Seeing none, receive now this benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.